Welcome to part 11 of the Intermediate Revit course. We're going to start looking at how to create a wall or ceiling floor trim. In this instance, we're going to be creating a ceiling trim, also known as a cornice. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials, and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. All right, so now we're going to be adding in some cornicing, which is that skirting that goes around the ceiling. And you can do this for floor skirting as well if you wanted to, but what we wanna do is try and match this render. And you can see that there is, sorry, this image. We wanna render out an image that looks like this image. So you can see that the cornice, which is what this bit here is called on the ceiling. At the moment, the model doesn't look right because it's not showing that cornice. But once we add that in, this will neaten up the whole render. And it's just one of those details that you can add to make it look a lot nicer. So what we're going to do is similarly to when we did curtain walls, we're going to be modeling this in place. And so for that, if you remember from the curtain wall lesson, we're going to be going to the architecture tab, component model in place, and we're going to be doing a generic model and you can name that whatever you'd like. We're going to go to our 3D view. And the first thing we want to do before doing this, it's going to be way too hard to access the games room where these cornices are. What we need to do is get out of this and then set up a section box or a selection box. So I'm going to press um, something in that area and just press BX to bring up that selection box and that's going to hide everything else. Then I'm just going to bring out this selection box so that it shows that whole games room. So I'm just going to adjust these a little bit. Just want to be able to look inside. Now that we've got our selection box set up, what we can do is model this in place. So we're going to go to component, model in place, generic model. I'm just going to press G to bring up generic models. Let's create this. The first thing we need to do is set up our work plane. So I'm going to click on set work plane. And obviously we're going to want this to be on the ceiling. If we were doing a ground skirting along here, then we would keep it on the ground floor. But we're going to change this to ground floor ceiling. As you can see, that work plane is now on the ceiling indicated by that blue line. So let's click OK. Whatever we model is going to be applied to this ground ceiling level. And then if we change that level, rather than having to come back and change this generic in place model, because it's constrained to that ground floor ceiling level, it'll move with whatever changes we do. All the walls, all the ceilings, all the floors will move with that level, which is awesome. So we're going to create this with a sweep, similarly to when we did the curved curtain wall. So let's click on sweep. And the first thing we wanna do is sketch a path. So we're going to sketch a path, which is going to be these walls around this games room. So with the pick lines tool selected, we can select the first wall, which is this corner wall here. And as you can see, once we click on that wall, a line is going to be made on that ground floor ceiling level. So you know that the cornice is going to be placed along this ceiling, which is what we want. Now, what we also want to do is lock this because if we were to change this wall and move the wall, then this cornice is going to move with that wall. So that's really important. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these ground floor walls. Make sure you lock it in place. Select this back wall, lock it in place. And as you can see, some of these lines are going to need to be trimmed back, which we can do later. I'm going to hit tab here to select this behind wall, lock that into place, select this back wall, lock that, select this wall here, lock it in. And then for this back wall, you're not going to be able to see it in the render. So it's up to you whether you want to model in this cornice. I'm just going to select this back wall here, which you know, we can then change later if we wanted to, but that's also something to consider. If you're not showing it in the renders, is it worth modeling up? Maybe if you're going to do a fly through of your model, then it might be worth modeling up. Or if you're doing actual drawings of this uh, internal elevation or something, but for us, we're not showing it. So we don't need to model it up. The client's not going to see it. Our teacher's not going to see it. The only people that see it is if you're working on the model. So don't waste your time on things that people aren't going to see. So let's go ahead and trim or extend these lines. Now I've just hit TR to bring up the trim or extend tool. I'm going to select the lines that we want to trim back to, which is this here and then select the other line. I'm just going to click on join elements and that looks pretty good. Now, as you can see, the cornice is currently going to be going over the windows, which is not necessarily what we want. We want those windows to be free of any cornices. 
Now, in fact, what you can actually see in this image is that there's a beam that runs along and holds up these columns here. And there's another one that runs horizontally across the middle of the room as well. So that's actually something we'll have to edit after we put in these cornices. So what that's going to involve is we're going to have to move these windows down and then put in those beams. And that would make these windows the correct height. But then if we were to actually model in the cornices and the windows were going to stay here, you'd want to split these lines and so you'd only have a line where the cornices are. So here in this corner bit where the bricks are, where the bricks are, where the bricks are, but you wouldn't want them covering the windows. So once you've got your sweep in place, you've picked the lines, what you can do is click finish edit mode and we're now going to create a profile for our sweep. So if we click edit profile, what we can now do is draw in the shape of the cornice. And as you can see, it is a kind of strange shape. You've got a curve here and then there's another little curvy bit up the top there. So there's two lines really. Now we're not going to know the dimensions of this perfectly, but we can have a go and just see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in this shape. I'm going to pick this reference plane and come down, let's say, let's make this 40 mils. And I'm going to create another one horizontally and make this 40 mils as well. And this is going to come down, I'm going to say 15 mils. And then we're going to create a start end radius arc. We're going to select both of these points and make sure it locks onto that line. And now what we can do is draw in that final one. So this was Dean Mills. If we come across horizontally 15 mils and we do another arc, we can draw this in, lock it onto there. And let's uh, actually get rid of this line here. We don't need that anymore. We can delete that. And let's have a look at what this cornice looks like now. So I'm going to click all of the, the finish edit modes. We're going to finish this and there's our cornice. Does it look like our cornice here? It's a little bit different. It isn't perfect. If we go to, if, let's just finish the model and have a look in a 3D view. I mean, for the most part, that looks pretty good. What I want to actually see this in though is the Enscape render. So if we go to Enscape, start our Enscape view we can have a look what this will look like in that final render. All right, so here's our render so far. And you can see that cornice up the top there, pretty good. It looks quite similar. You could make it a little bit smaller if you wanted to. In the next lesson, we're going to start looking at how to create curtains in Revit. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.